Hello, Sid Roth here with Chris Garcia, and I have to tell you, I have heard amazing things about what he teaches. He does something I've not seen before. I, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. He leads people and teaches people how to have great intimacy with the Holy Spirit. And speaking of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you are our most important guest. Holy Spirit, I expect everyone viewing, Chris and myself included, to have an encounter with you. And I thank you, Holy Spirit. This is a contagious zone. People will catch intimacy with the Holy Spirit. How did you get into this insatiable appetite for the presence of God and start teaching people on it. For me, the, the the presence of God became an insatiable yearning for me because I was blessed to be a part of a church that was filled with the Holy Spirit. And so when I left the Catholic Church, I was a part of a very Spirit-filled uh, congregation. And when I was 16, 17, going on those ages, I was there was a part of uh, that we had like kind of like a youth revival, and they they waited on God. It was all about God's presence, and that led me personally to seek God as my highest aim. I never looked to try to get something from him. I didn't even look for an encounter said or a vision. I just looked to his presence. It was something that just was always a part of my DNA since the moment I've got, you know, born again. I remember about you that yeah. in your family line, you had yes. people involved in really witchcraft. What, Absolutely. what, what was that? Yeah. So my great grandfather from my father's side was actually a priest of Santeria, which is uh, Spanish witchcraft that's mixed with African spiritualism. All of my uncles were high, uh, were priests of Santeria. One particular one was like a high priest. And my grandmother was a medium spiritualist. But in the 80s, um, she had radically given her life to Jesus Christ. She had an open vision of Jesus and she knew at that moment she was in a place of despair. She's like, she's like, I see my my sister who she was coming to faith and she had this joy about her. And she's like, she's like, God, I don't know which one is it. Is it is it Jesus or is it the stuff that I'm doing in the corner of her eye? She looks and she see a man dressed in white with fire in his eyes, shoulder length hair. He, she knew at that moment she was going to go to hell. No one said anything to her. She just knew that. Not only did she get saved, she went through full-blown deliverance. She was manifesting legions of devils. That's kind of like how God started doing those things. But for me, I wasn't around that family. Church wasn't something that we were doing all the time. I started in a very nominal Catholic home. Um, the first time that I heard the gospel message myself, I was nine years old. And I remember receiving Christ these Two little silver-haired ladies led me to Jesus out in the projects. Uh, we didn't have much growing up and uh, an upbringing in that way. And I remember them talking about Jesus. I heard the, the message of righteousness, sin, repentance, the gospel. I'd never heard of these terms like this before. And they said, would you like to receive Jesus? And I raised my hand immediately. I said, I, I want to receive Jesus. And I said, as a kid, I was very oppressed. Um, I would often cry myself to sleep for no reason. I struggled immensely with tormenting thoughts of fear. Uh, it would come in bouts. Uh, I was a miserable kid as a, as a little child for no specific reason. I remember that when they led me to Jesus, my heart grew strangely warm is the only way I could describe it. Um, for the first time, I felt joy. I felt a light on the inside of me. And as a nine-year-old, I would, I would, uh, I would tell my friends about Jesus. I would force them to pray when we would have lunch. <laughs> it was just something like that. And and what drew me to God was His awesome presence. And the the two ladies asked me. They said, they said, um, what do you want God to do for you? And I said, well, um, I want to go back to the church that I came from. Well, you know, in my mind, all I knew was the Catholic Church. But God, in His mercy and His grace, He knows how to reach you where you're at. 
And so two weeks later, I started going back to the Catholic church. But here's the funny thing, Sid. The day that I took communion, I used to take communion all the time. And it would, you know, there was really nothing going on because I didn't, I didn't have knowledge. But two weeks after that, as I give my life to Jesus, as I knew what I was doing like this, um, I felt the presence of the Holy Spirit as a little kid. And I was crying. And then my mom was crying. And I didn't even, I had no grid for that. I wasn't taught those things. I didn't understand that. I had no knowledge. And so even though I had no knowledge, God's precious Holy Spirit ministered to me where I was at, where I was at looking for him. As I understand it, uh, something happened, a relative died, yes. and you blamed God, and mm -hmm. you backslid, for lack of better words. But then you came back like gangbusters. Take me in just a few of the highlights of your right. coming back. Uh, my mom had me when she was 17. And mm -hmm. and so my grandmother was kind of like a mother figure to me as well. She was very sweet, very dear. She helped raise me uh, with my mom. She ends up with cancer and she dies at the age of 53 years old. Uh, and so I th did not have an understanding that that uh, scripturally of God's will, God's plan, healing, all of those things. And I blamed God. I thought God was the one responsible, did not know that the, you say, Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I spiral into deep depression, a uh, deep anxiety. I, I thought of suicide on several occasions uh, because there was, it was, it was a combination between her death and me spiraling away that just led to all sorts of darkness. I had a friend of mine and for some reason, I just started telling him all my problems while God was setting me up. And he said, you know what you need? He said, you need Jesus. And I got mad. I was hostile. I was like, I don't, Jesus killed my grandmother. I don't want anything to do with that, you know? And then, and then um, he was like, dude, you should just come, just come to our service. And I said, do you guys speak in tongues and all that? Because I remember seeing that mm -hmm. in times past. And he was like, he was like, yeah, he's like, then I'm not going to it. And um, he was like, why don't you come and then I'll leave you alone if you don't like it. Well, Sid, what began to happen was every single day uh, prior to that day, uh, demons would come to my room and they would torment me. Mm -hmm. um, it, I remember the first time, as soon as he told me this, that night, the next day rather, uh, I felt a presence in the room and I could not move my body. And I've never experienced that before. You know, the Bible says if you get set free and then go back, yeah, it's, it's worse. 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 Is that it's what worse. you experienced? Yeah, I believe so. It was it was worse. And the next day that presence got closer. Then the next day it got closer to the point where on one occasion said I had these multiple demons pull me up out of my 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 body. And I was floating and screaming, even though my body was on the floor, it was some sort of demonic attack and they were pulling me down and I was screaming and, and then I would open my eyes and I was back to it. And I started to tell my friend about this and I said, Hey, I'm going to go to your church the next day, but this is happening to me. And he was like, bro, he's like, that sounds like evil. He's like, but you know, maybe God wants to do something. I knew the gospel at nine years old. I had no real uh, solid scriptural understanding because I veered away for so long. Mm -hmm. I was interested in other spiritual things. So I had Buddha statues. I was into all sorts of different types of religions. I was so confused. And finally, at three in the morning, it was March the 2nd of 2006, this being, as I'm sleeping, comes up out of the window. And this thing was about 15 feet tall. And immediately, uh, panic, terror. I was so, so scared, Sid. I've never seen anything like that before. And I, and I, and I was paralyzed with fear, and I could not move my body. Hmm. And... I started screaming, God, help me, God, help me. And that thing's face was on my face. And I started to he uh, hear br br uh, breaths, you know, breathing. And I was like, God, please help me. So what I did was I started going down the road. I was like, Allah, Buddha. I just started going off mm -hmm. of what I understood. And then I remember as a Catholic kid, I said the Lord's prayer. And I said, our father who are in the moment I said that, 
it grabbed me by the neck and started violently bashing my head on the floor and I could not breathe. I was literally choking under this heavy demonic entity and out of my mouth, out of pure desperation, I just said, Jesus. But before I said Jesus, all I said was G and it went boom, this noise and it immediately fled. And I knew at that moment that the name of Jesus had power. I did not understand that. I, I, I was confused. I was like, what was that? And later on, when I was sharing this testimony with my mom, that's when she started to unveil to me that there were many things in witchcraft that was that my family was a part of. And I felt that was the last draw, the, that was the generational bondage that was trying to keep me under that. And as soon as that was over, Sid, I woke up uh, the next day. I didn't even tell my friend what occurred. I just kind of like, what was that? I, I just kind of kept it to myself. And I went to his church and I felt the presence of God again, started flooding me again. I started thinking about when I was nine years old and, and, and bless, bless my heart and my silly head. You know, I said to the Lord, God, I forgive you for killing my grandmother. You know, I was so <laughs> silly. I did not know, you know, but God is so gentle. God is such a awesome heavenly father. And immediately uh, the presence of the Holy Spirit began to rush me and began to remind me of those moments when I was a little kid. And um, what was powerful with that is I heard the gospel clearly preached again, very clearly. It was like life or death. And I knew, and, and it, it wasn't a fear out of uh, scared. It was like an, uh, an honor reverence thing. I knew that if I did not give my life to Jesus, my life would be destroyed. I would be in a place of destruction. And I ran as fast as I could to that altar. And I received Jesus Christ at the age of 16. And I knew what I was doing this time. I got water baptized. There was other things, other issues um, in my own soul, uh, such as uh, uh, suicidal thoughts, uh, they were still kind of there a little bit, but when I got water baptized, it broke. And then it started me on a journey to get baptized with the Holy Spirit. And it led me to this insatiable hunger for the presence of God. You have a way of helping people yes. that have all sorts of resistance, demonic strongholds, that's what it is, and they don't even know it is. Right. They, they can just go so far. And you have a way through praising God and teaching them to praise God as well, if not better than you, Yes, that they can get free. God taught me how to spend time with him. I would spend three, four, sometimes five hours in prayer. And mostly what it was, was uh, as simple as praising, worshiping, being still, waiting before God. I would fumble my way to spend time with God. I remember when um, when I first started, I would just pray the house down, pray and, and, you know, just say so many things. But God has this beautiful way about himself that he teaches you how to pray, um, but you need to just start moving. You just need to start walking it out. As you start praying, he shows you how to pray. Prayer leads you to fellowship. That fellowship communion leads you to revelation. And so uh, my prayers went from yelling and and and, and trying to uh, strive and work something up to um, silent stillness. He taught me how to wait. Many times I would wake up early in the morning and I would just try to say something. He would go, and then his presence would minister to me. And then I would be real quiet. And it was like a sweet exchange. Uh, you know, Sid, the definition of communion, the Webster's definition is the exchanging of hearts and thoughts on an emotional and spiritual level. And that's what God was calling me to. The more I spend time with him, the more his thoughts became my thoughts. His feelings became my feelings. His discernment became my discernment. And now it shifted in such a way where most of my time, I just spend enjoying his presence, being still, learning to wait. And waiting before God is the secret 
to deeper fellowship with the Spirit. The scriptures tell us, Sid, in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as of eagles. They shall walk and not grow uh, weary. They, they shall run and not faint. Isaiah 41, 1 opens up with, be silent, O coastlands, and let the peoples renew their strength. The scriptures also declare in the Psalms that those who wait on him are strengthened in their hearts. And I believe that so many people don't wait on him. We're in McDonald's society. That's right. Instant, instant, instant. How does someone wait before God that's that's a type A, go, go, type, instant, yeah. everything immediate? Well, to be honest with you, Sid, that's that's my personality. So I understand it very well. When I first started spending time with Jesus, it was like every 30 seconds, I was distracted. Every 30 <laughs> seconds, I was thinking about something. I would get so deep with God, and I'm like, I forgot to fold the laundry. I forgot to do this. I for That's very common. It Don't get into condemnation or guilt when you're constantly distracted. It's about practicing this. And as you'll start to notice, maybe the first 30 seconds, you're, you're constantly distracted. But if you keep sticking to it, those 30 seconds will be every two minutes. You start training yourself, your soul, your mind to, to subject itself in prayer. The carnal man cannot stand being in God's presence. The fallen flesh uh, is always busy, always idle, always wanting to do something else. It takes the spirit to do that. But in order for the spirit to do that, you've got to give the spirit your time. And if that means two minutes, that means five minutes. If that it's more, it's said, you know, it's not about the quantity with God. It's about the quality with God. It's about walking with him and being with him daily. As you give him more of your time, God begins to work in you. It's the exchange of communion. Do you believe Everyone here that has it has had an encounter with Jesus, an experience with him, that believes he's real, that he's their Messiah, Savior, and Lord, can have the same thing you have. 100%. Absolutely. And the results you're getting are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Tell me yeah. again. Yeah. Well, I would say just to kind of echo what you're saying, Sid, like why would God withhold his presence from us? If his presence is the very thing that conforms you to Christ's image. Why would he withhold that from, from us? He wants us to fellowship with him. The, the, the effects are clear. For me, it's affected me personally. Um, I've been saved since I was really 16 years old. I'm 34 now, and I have a greater hunger for Jesus now than I did back then. It's never waned. Abiding with God on a consistent daily basis puts oil in you. Your lamp becomes full of oil. Uh, you, you, you start to, uh, it takes God to want God. Okay. So the more you spend time with Jesus, the more you desire him. Next thing you know, your affections, your, your, your desires begin to change. It's, it's the work of his grace. Scripture tells us, um, that God is the one at work that is able to will and to do of his good pleasure in us. He is the one that wills us to want these things. Some of the deepest moments I've ever had with Jesus were less than 10 minutes, you know? And so it's a, it's about the quality, uh, not the quantity. And for me, um, like I said, on our stream, um, the way that that whole thing started was I was doing the channel, the YouTube channel. I was, I was kind of fed up with it, to be honest with you. And, and I, I, the Holy Spirit asked me to let it go. And I said, Lord, I let it go. And I had an Abraham uh, Isaac moment. And I said, I'm going to let go of this channel. And then the spirit of God spoke to me and he said, I'll never forget it. He says, good, because you're giving it to me. I want to be the center of attention, not you, Chris. <laughs> That's what he said. He said, I want my presence to be the center of attention. And this is what you're going to do. You are going to spend time with me in front of the people. I don't want you to say a word. I want you to just put some worship. And I just want you to be still and I want you to forget everybody. And I want you to just spend time with me 
in silent worship to him. And I said to the Lord, Lord, who's going to watch that? That's so awkward. Like, I'm not, I'm not saying anything. And he, and he said these words to me, he said, because there are many people that don't know how to spend time with me. And I'm going to demonstrate this by using you in the channel. Tell people how they can go on your uh, online channel if they care to. Sure. Yeah. Uh, just look for Chris Garcia, just my name, or you can look for Fresh Oil Live with Chris Garcia. But Chris Garcia uh, is the first thing that populates up on the YouTube channel. The Bible says you're either hot or cold, but mm -hmm. if you're lukewarm, I'll vomit you out. Lukewarm is a deception. You're either That's going right. forwards or backwards. If you were to pray a supernatural prayer, I don't want to put words in your mouth, what effect would it have on people that say, they're talking about me, I want what they have? What effect yeah. would it have? Well, first of all, the prayer of faith grabbed onto produces tremendous power. The scripture says the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous avails much. This is what I tell people. You can't transfer your personal intimacy. Right. But what you can transfer is hunger for God's presence by transferring the Holy Spirit. Has this operated with many people that you've prayed for? Many times. And, and it's funny because most of the time, Sid, and this is what makes it even more supernatural. Most of the time, I'm not even aware that I'm praying for them. It's just I'm just sitting there and they're they're receiving from fellowship. Just me communing with God. They join into that fellowship and they start receiving. I've had so many people tell me on the stream, as soon as they get on, it feels very strong, the presence of God. Some people have told me, I'm starting to see things uh, I've never seen before and explaining. Sometimes I'll pray in the spirit and, and I'll get people say, I understood what you were saying in tongues. And they'll say that uh, we've had many people filled with the Holy Spirit just by sitting and waiting before God. The most powerful is uh, notable miracles on the stream, Sid, is the ones that I'm unaware of. <laughs> it's the ones that he's doing without me even knowing. Chris, there are going to be notable miracles on this show. First of all, I want you, the entry position is to have your own experiential right. knowledge of God. I want to pray that prayer. Then, yes. Chris, I want you to pray the hunger prayer. And yes. then I want you uh, to open yourself up to any words of knowledge or healing yes. or miracles. So repeat this prayer after me. Just mean it to the best of your ability. That's all God's asking for. Wherever you're at, uh, you could have been going to church your whole life and you know you've never had this kind of experience with God, your own, something that no one can ever take away from you because it's between you and God. And as a matter of fact, you'll never, ever walk in. I, I had this experience when I was 30 years of age as, as a traditional Jewish man. And I have to tell you, uh, Chris, I know it happens. It happened to you, but I can't comprehend backsliding. Why? I know what's back there. Right. Who would be so stupid to want to go <laughs> what's back there when you can keep pressing forward and forward from glory to glory, glory to glory to glory? So repeat this prayer, everyone, out loud. Dear God, I've made many mistakes in my life. I'm so sorry. I believe you shed your blood to wash away every mistake I've ever made. And because of your sacrifice, you paid the price for all of my mistakes. And now that I am clean, Jesus, come and live inside of me. Holy Spirit, fill me with your presence. I make you not just the savior of my sins, I make you Lord over every area of my life. Chris, pray for all that God hunger. And guess what, Chris? I'm getting in on this. 
I need yes. more. You watching, you need more. Come on. <laughs> yes. Father, I just come before you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, the name that's above every name. And I lift up everyone that is watching right now. And I pray, Father, that by your spirit, Lord, you would release a great yearning of your spirit. Deep calling unto deep, Father. Awaken your bride for great hunger for your presence, Lord. Moses cried out, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. Lord, cause us to be a people who are very, very hungry for the bread of your presence. Spirit of God, I pray in Jesus' name, begin to move right now by the power of your Spirit. Begin to release an impartation of passion, pursuit of your presence, and great sensitivity and hunger in Jesus' mighty name. There's a woman that is watching, and I see a, um, a bouquet of flowers, and it's been thrown to the ground, and your heart is broken. The Lord says to you, I'm your husband. He sees the trauma. He sees the issue. He sees that there was a situation in which you were going to get married, but the Lord is rerouting you, and, and, and he's got a better path, a better plan. That what one door is shut, another one opens. And he says to you that I am your husband. You are my bride. There's another man that's watching. You're a Jewish man and you're watching and you're stuck between two opinions. Is Yeshua Jesus Messiah or is he not? And you feel the, 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 the prick of your heart. You feel the string of your heart being pulled even now. Father, I pray for the kavod of God, the heavy, weighty glory of the Lord that came upon Israel to come upon that individual in Jesus' mighty name. There's another woman that's watching that uh, you're surrounded by what looks like to be dogs, what looks like to be people that, that, are, that are constantly taking and taking and taking from you. And all you've known you're in your 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 middle-aged woman. You're in your late uh, 50s Caucasian uh, woman, and all you've known is the tears of your bitterness. And the Lord says to you, He takes a the presence of God, His goodness, like medicine, and He puts it in your mouth. Receive the sweetness of God. Taste and see that He is good. No longer will your pool be bitter waters but a pool of refreshing. So Father, I thank you right now that by your spirit, your spirit is like medicine. I keep seeing that medicine going into people's mouths. Your presence, Lord, your word is healing and wholeness. I thank you that you're doing this now by the power of your spirit. There's someone watching and you're feeling the electrifying power of the spirit. You've never felt this before. It's like a tingling in your bones, a rattling in your bones. That's the spirit. Receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and power in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. We honor you. I am hearing a stream of words of physical healing. The mm. first one I heard is someone with a wrist problem. If you will just move your wrist, you'll see you do not have pain. You don't have the carpal tunnel. You don't have whatever a discomfort you had there before. And I see it moving right up to the elbow. And I see elbows being healed. People that have elbow problems. Uh, but it's really strong in wrists. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, 20 people don't uh, get instantly healed of wrist problems. And, and the thing that God always operates with me, and I'm even hearing it right now, is if you have a neck ache, you move your head, you'll see that there is no pain. If you have a back ache, 
bend over, taste and see that the Lord is good. And someone with a problem in their hip, it seems as though every pain is going to go with the glory that is in this studio. Uh, uh, Chris, mm -hmm. is there anyone, yeah. any word, the one you see or words you're hearing now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm seeing another woman with looks like a walker, not like a like like a full like, kind of like those walkers with the golf balls on the bottom. And from when you said hip, I, I saw that too a hip, but the hip down swelling all over. There's a edema. Father, we pray right now that by your spirit, a supernatural work of healing would occur that 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 woman would feel you're feeling a heat. Uh, going into your body and releasing a cure in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for bringing healing there. And Lord, I pray specifically for those who have been yearning for more of your presence, more of your glory, Lord. Bring, bring a great affection for your presence. There is many watching, Lord, that desire that, Lord, that I see a door that's wide open and i think of that scripture where it says i stand at the door and knock and there are some of you that are hearing that knock he says if any man opens the door i will come into him and sup with him the lord has been leading many of you knocking at the door of your heart he's saying let me in and i'm speaking specifically to believers you've not opened the door to personal fellowship some of you've lost your tears. Some of you've lost your fears, your, your fear of the Lord. Some of you have, have uh, what, what seems, it's like your heart has grown callous towards the things of God. Some of you right now are going through a, a dryness like you've never experienced. It's time to return back. It's time for the rain to start pouring again. It's time for the Spirit of God to turn your wilderness into pools of water. How do we do that, Chris? How you're asking. He says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy with laden, and I will give rest for your soul. He said on that great day in Matthew and John 7, he says, if any man thirsts, let him come to me and drink and out of his belly will flow rivers of living water come to him how do i do that acknowledge him adjust your heart to begin to draw near to him and begin to cleave begin to receive him by faith faith is the way we drink faith is the way we imbibe i'm thinking of this other scripture where it says there is a river psalm 46 there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place, the tabernacle of the Most High. The streams, the rivers of living water are in the tabernacle of the Most High. And you, my friend, you, my brother, you, my sister, are the tabernacle dwelling place of the spirit of the living God. So come freely, come and receive in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. One last Amen. word, and this is it. The greatest degree of the presence of the manifest glory of the living God, according to Ishiahu Isaiah chapter 60, will come in a time of great darkness, and it is living water, not just natural water. It's living water. And when you are in God's presence, no sickness can coexist. No demon can coexist. No fear can coexist. No grief can coexist. No worry can coexist. And I say to you, the best is yet to come.